YouTube, what is up? It's AD with US Squads. I hope you're enjoying your day. Today we're talking AR-15s. In particular, we're talking about the difference between AR-15 direct gas impingement and piston AR-15s. So in AR-15s in general, you're going to be used to a what's called a DI direct gas impingement AR-15. And that's going to be 95 plus percent of the ARs out there. So if you buy an AR from a store and you're paying about 1200 or under you're buying a DI direct gas impingement AR now there's definitely companies like LWRC, POF, Ruger, um, Bushmaster they all make piston driven AR-15s there's great conversion kits such as the Atom Arms uh, piston driven kit I'm gonna explain the difference real quick make this a quick seven minute video and explain the differences for you guys so what I have here is I have two AR uppers that I've taken off the lower and uh, one is direct gas impingement the other one's a piston upper I've removed the hand guards so I can clearly illustrate the uh, setup for you so we've taken off the hand guards and we're having some fun today so here we go this is a basically a DI standard AR-15 direct gas impingement AR-15 and how this works is simply when you fire around the gas pressures uh, go through the barrel and then it actually will go through this gas tube and what will happen is it will actually cycle the, the pressures of the gases will hit a gas key in, on your bolt carrier group and boom will cycle the round and create that semi-automatic action every time you fire you're gonna have that the hot gases and the and the pressures cycle this uh, this bolt so if you look at the bolt here you're gonna have a gas key and inside is where that that gas pressure hits and pushes this back to cycle that round now what why would they change the design if that's the standard well the challenge with this system and this design is all the fouling and hot gases actually get that's what cycles the bolt so that's why when you're cleaning your AR after three to five hundred rounds it's really dirty and we're talking carbon black really dirty rifle and that can cause issues and reliability issues for some people now I my ARs uh, I can go a pretty high round high round count without any problems and so I'm pretty confident with my AR with the way that I've built it out it, mine works fine and a lot of people who have high-end ARs have no problems but I've spent a lot of time on the range helping people with with ARs that just were dirty and were having issues they were having cycling issues and etc but my ARs have never had problems so why did I switch to a gas piston well let's show you why this is a gas piston AR uh, piston driven and this is a operation rod so instead of the gases going through your barrel through this gas block up the gas tube and cycling your firearm when you fire around this block this gas regulator regulates all the gases and will push this rod so actually all the gas action ends up here in the front of the rifle there's no tube this is not a tube this is a steel rod that's solid this actually as soon as you fire and this this gas block manipulates the gases it actually pushes back and strikes your bolt carrier group so your bolt carrier group actually let me just do this sorry I got us all I'm building rifles so so basically there's no gas key here this is a rod this is basically a block of steel and that rod will hit that block of steel and operate the rifle like so okay now the nice thing about that is all the gases are manipulated at the front here at this gas block so you don't have carbon and you don't have hot gases going into the main action of the rifle uh, gumming the rifle up now that's why that these rifles uh, you know the claim is they're more reliable less cleaning uh, very you know kind of AK 47 ish because this is how uh, similar to how an AK operates what's the downfall well the cost <clears throat> is a lot more all the companies are proprietary there's not a universal piston driven system you don't have five companies that have the exact same components that are interchangeable every company has different components different piston systems different setups so they're not exactly universal so spare parts is you know if you buy spare parts you have to buy it for Atom Arms or P 
uh, POF. And then also there's a concern with carrier tilt. Now carrier tilt, the original ARs were built so when the gases strike, it does a straight back motion. <clears throat> Excuse me, when you have an operation rod and it's pushing on this, it could cause a tilt and it could actually wear down the buffer tube spring right there, the uh, buffer tube. And if that wears down because of the tilt, it erodes away on that buffer tube. This spring could this detent spring. Once it once that buffer tube lip doesn't cover, clip onto that uh, detent spring, you're gonna have major issues. Now let me address carrier tilt. Here's my primary rifle, and I have a I have a primary weapon system super deluxe, uh, actually six position buffer tube, and I, I need to do a video on that. This is a really cool buffer tube. And it's actually designed and has an extended lip designed for piston-driven ARs. And if you can look on there, hopefully the camera can zoom in. I've shot 2,000 rounds with a piston upper. And there's absolutely no wear, no carrier tilt wear whatsoever. Now, the, the disclaimer is, is the upper I'm using uh, is not this Adam Arms upper. This is actually a build kit that I'm going to do a video on. It's actually a POF, uh, Patriot Ordnance upper. And, you know, that's kind of the, in my opinion, one of the high-end, super high-end piston AR-15s. That's, again, um, we're going to beta test this Atom Arms and see if there's any evidence of carrier tilt. Uh, with that, we'll shoot, you know, a thousand rounds through that, and I'll, I'll do that video soon. So that's it, guys. Hopefully that is an explanation on the difference between DI, direct gas impingement, which is the standard. And then the piston-driven, if you're shopping AR-15s and you're wondering, why this piston AR, what is a piston AR, say a Ruger uh, piston AR, and why is it more expensive? Um, that's kind of why in general. The piston ARs typically start start at $1,300. do not be surprised when you see piston ARs for $1,800 to $1,900 versus your standard DI, you know, which is starts at about $1,000. Clean time and maintenance, I'll tell you what, if, you know, I enjoy cleaning my DI. I, I, it's therapeutic for me to clean my ARs. Um, I don't mind, but I'll tell you what, ever since I've switched to the piston driven, my clean time is reduced by a third. Actually, to a third. I, I can clean my rifle in 15 minutes versus 40 minutes of intense cleaning because of the carbon buildup. Because I, you know, I shoot three to 400 rounds, three to 500 rounds per session. So I shoot a lot of rounds through my rifle every time I go out. So that's it. Hopefully, that gives you a great explanation. Thank you for watching. I definitely appreciate all the support. Please subscribe and give me a thumbs up if this video is helpful. You guys enjoy your day, enjoy your life, and I appreciate you watching. Thank you so much.